Progression for me is, uh, is life. Progression for me is one of the most important parts of the game. So progression is really important for us in Assassin's Creed 2. We live the life of someone. That was the main idea, you know, when we say, let's have a character for over 30 years. We really want the player to feel the same emotion that the character has uh, throughout the, his quest to avenge his family. Our game begins in 1476 and it ends in 1503, so it's a considerable span of years for a video game. It's the height of the Italian Renaissance. This is when the most beautiful paintings, the greatest sculptures, the most wonderful architecture are all being built uh, and created. And at the same time, it's a period of political uh, intrigue and drama and, um, and, and violence as well. What do you want, Vieri? So many things. A prettier bride. Oh, and yes, your life. There was a lot of, like, really sparks of energy and, and interesting ideas that happened during that period. We also want our character to go through a change. I think the mission structure is completely compatible to the time span that we want to cover. Uh, in the sense that it allows us to uh, have some flexibility and really focus on the most poignant events that happen in history and in Ezio's life throughout his progression. Throughout the game, he's going to encounter people. I was hoping you could help me with something. He will have uh, friends that will teach him abilities. Uh, he will be taught fighting by his uh, uncle. He will learn a few skills from uh, the different groups of uh, different factions in the crowd. I'm going to teach you how to survive. He'll also learn by himself a few tricks. And this will uh, make sure that uh, the player progresses in the game in a way that uh, always uh, varies the, the experience. If your character isn't evolving and it's not, be like you're not looking, oh, what's my next new toy? Or what, what's the next thing that I'm gonna get to, get to play with? Uh, the game will feel stale. So it's very, very important that the game feels refreshing. You know, every new mission that you play, there's something to look forward to at the end. The more and more the game progresses, the more and more anger he has, and the more and more he has to let out that anger. So he just, the moves just keep coming and coming and coming on what he can do with the different weapons that he has. You start with just basic sword attacks and the ability to defend yourself. And then we introduce disarming and counter kills, and then from there it all opens up. The player will be requested to, to actually buy uh, some of his gear. For example, we have the armors, uh, which uh, will give him more uh, health points, hit points in general. He starts with various sets of armor, uh, the first one being just leather uh, armor, and then the, it moves throughout uh, more uh, metal armor, provides him more protection. In AC1, we sort of just sort of gave the player, without any choice, this is what you're going to learn next. Whereas in AC2, the player has much more choice. Since such a, a large uh, part of Ezio's story is him, you know, answering the question, who am I and what am I doing here and, and what's my purpose? You can't answer that question in a year or two. You know, it takes the span of almost his entire life. There's a hero in the hood. Fear him not, lest you who have sinned, for his cause is good.